All right, so now we need to be able to update our our customer info. And rather than the traditional click on it and it takes you to a page where you can edit a form, uh, I just wanted to make it a, do something a little different and use the HTML5 content editable attribute, which allows us to just click on the inline text and just edit it. And then when we, when we click outside of it, it'll update. All right, so what we need to do is first add those attributes. So in our, our um, generated HTML here, we want to go to our spans. And what we're going to do is just add the content editable attribute and set that to true. Okay, we want to do that for the for the name span and the email span. So now if we go ahead and reload and click on, you can see that I can edit this, okay? And it stays that way, but if I reload the page, it come it, the original text comes back and that's because we've only added HTML. We haven't added our JavaScript which is needed to process it all right or to power it whatever you want to call it but before we do that I want to make this look a little better I don't like how there's no padding in the form or in the input box so I'm going to first um, I'm gonna add a class actually to the span tag okay we're gonna need them for something else anyway so we're gonna give this a class of cursor and also customer and I'll do the same thing with the email all right so now let's go to the CSS file and let's see for the cursor class I just want to change the the point when you're when you hover over a name or an email I want the, the cursor to change to a pointer all right so cursor pointer just so they know that they can click on it okay so you can see it now changes when I hover over the text changes to a pointer okay now I want to add a little padding to this as well so in the style sheet, um, let's see, we want span with the class of customer. Okay, so padding. I'm going to add 8 pixels for the top and bottom and 20 pixels for the right and left. Okay, so now when we click on it, that looks better. Okay. So that's it for the, the physical aspect of this. Now we need to deal with the actual um, functionality. Now calling, now applying this functionality to these elements is gonna be a little different. We're not gonna create a, a customary function like we have with the other the other um, functionality. All right. So what we want to say is, when we click on a span with the class of customer, which is any of these, uh, we want to run a function. Okay. I'm sorry. Not when we click on it, but when we edit it and then we click out of it. Okay. That's called a blur. That's a uh, blur event. Okay. So we want to use that. All right, so update customers. Okay, so we want to grab. We're going to uh, we're going to use the on method. Okay, so we're going to delegate uh, the blur event. So let's see, customers, which is the 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 ID of the entire row. Okay, and then we're going to say dot on. And the event we want is blur. 
Okay, and then here we want to put the actual uh, element that we want to that we're talking about, which is going to be the class of customer. Okay, and then the last parameter will be the function. Okay, so whatever um, happens when we hit the blur event, this is this is where we're going to put the code. Okay, so the first thing we want to go do is get the new text. So um, we'll just say newly entered text. Okay, so variable new text is going to be equal to this. This meaning the span tag that we're clicking on. So we want the HTML that's in that. Okay, so when we do this, this text here is now uh, the new text. All right. Okay, and then we also want the field. All right, now what I'm going to do is add a couple of data attributes so we can access it inside of jQuery. All right, so we want to go to our generated HTML again and we want to add let's see I want to add two attributes one called data field which will basically be the name of the field so it would be name and email and then I want to create another one called uh, data ID which is just basically going to have the ID so let's do this at the end of the span right here okay we're going to create a new attribute data we'll do field first so data field is going to be equal to name. Okay, and let me just copy this. This right here. Email. Now remember these data attributes, they're custom. There, there's not a set attribute called data field. I'm creating that so that we can access it in our JavaScript. Okay, the next one is going to be data ID. Well, all right, now we want to pass the ID in there, okay, which I can grab right here. And then we just want to copy that and put that here. All right. So now we can actually uh, check this out with Chrome tools. Let's just uh, take a look at this. So we have a span with the class of cursor and customer. Okay, content editable true. Then we have an attribute called data field, which is name, and then data ID, which is three. Okay, and you have those for all of these. All right. Okay, let me get rid of this. Okay, so now what we want to do is grab those data fields. Okay, and the first one is going to be field. I'm going to put it into a variable. So field is going to be equal to um, one second. Okay, it's going to be equal to this, meaning the span tag dot data, which is basically a method to get a data field. Okay, and the field we want is actually called field. Okay, so this here is going to get the attribute data field. Okay, and then the ID Okay, we're going to do the same thing. This dot data and then in here is going to be ID. Okay, so that gives us the information we need to make an update. Okay, so now we're going to do the actual update. I'm going to do the transaction. Let me just copy from up here. Actually, I can, I can copy this too. Okay, transaction is good. We do want read write. 
uh, store good. Okay, so the request the request we're going to do not delete, but we're going to do um, get. All right, so this is this transaction here is going to uh, it's going to get the field that we want to change. We we haven't updated it yet. Okay, to update it we're going to use store dot put, but this is just going to get it. So after we do this, we want to uh, specify the callbacks, just like we've been doing. Request dot on success equals function. All right. So in here is where we want to do um, is where we want to do the actual update. Okay. So we're going to create a, a variable called data and set that to request dot result. All right. Now what we want to do here is like is something like this. If we want to update the email field, we want to say data email equals new text. All right. So uh, just so we can get the email and the name, we're going to do a little if statement. I apologize. I'm kind of losing my voice. Okay, so we're going to say here if field, which is our variable coming from here. Okay, so if field is equal to name, then we want uh, data dot name to equal new text, which is what we typed in. Okay, so else if field is equal to email. Then we want to say data dot email equals new text. All right, so that specifies what we want to update. Okay, now we need to actually do the update. Okay, so we're going to create a variable and I'm going to call this one request update just so that we don't get confused with this request object. Okay, but basically we're going to do um, kind of the same thing. We're going to set this to store dot put data. Okay, so this put is what you want to use to update. And then we can do our handlers for request update. Okay, so we'll say request update dot on success okay and all we're going to do here is do a console log okay we'll just say customer field updated Okay, and then we just want to do the error callback. Customer field not updated. All right, so hopefully this works. Reload. Let's go ahead and try to change something here. We'll change Smith to Samson. Okay, now if we reload, it stays there. Okay, let's try and change the email. Reload, and it stays there. So now we can do complete CRUD. We can create customers, uh, we can read, update, and delete customers. So that's it for our application. Uh, obviously, um, if this was a production app, you'd want to add more functionality, more fields. Um, the way that we have it, it's pretty scalable. Uh, basically, you can just add to your um, to your uh, to your uh, generated HTML and to your form. And when you define a customer up here, you obviously want to add more fields, uh, things like that. But it, it's fairly scalable. Um,
but yeah, so that's it for chapter 10, last chapter. All right, so now we'll go into the wrap up and we'll kind of cover what we've learned through the series.